Today, there is something God has ministered to me. Uh, most cases, he first ministers to me. Hallelujah. And then he gives me the opportunity to minister to his people. Sometimes I have these things in my notes for a long time because he's speaking to me. He's handling me, doing something in me, dealing with me. But later on, I feel the lead to edify his people through that which he has revealed to me. So today, we are talking about your contribution to your deliverance. Our theme today is your contribution to deliverance. Your contribution to deliverance or your contribution to your deliverance. We all believe that we are people that desire, desperately need God's hand in our lives, desperately need God's re redemption, healing, deliverance. So this is for us. Hallelujah. So I'm trusting the spirit of the living God with me to edify us all. And I believe our lives are not going to stay the same. So this is what the Holy Spirit is ministering to us this morning. Um, I will begin by saying we can only, 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 we can only walk in the power of deliverance if we understand the key to deliverance. We can only operate in the realms of deliverance, on the power of deliverance, if we understand the key to deliverance. Hallelujah. If we comprehend this concept in our walk with God, we shall experience the power of deliverance. We are so many frustrated believers. We are so many frustrated children of God that are so desperate for the hand of God, so desperate for the move of God, but nothing is falling in place. Nothing is happening. But particularly, I'll say, this message is unto everyone that desires better, but is stuck up in the same situations over and over again. I say it again. This message is unto you, is unto me, or is unto everybody that desires better, desires to do better, but is stuck up in the same situations over and over again. Let's all believe us at a certain point, many of us, we are trapped up in unceasing conditions. We've prayed to God, but in vain. We deeply feel we know better to do better. Hallelujah. Repeat. We deeply feel we know better to do better, but we stuck up in the same, in same series of habits. This is a message for you. You feel you know better, to do better, to work better, to relate better, but you stack up in same habits. In series of habits. You stack up in same conditions. Hallelujah. Like I've told you, this is a message the Lord has been ministering to me as a person. I will first go personal. Personally, have, have been in a season of desiring a better place in my walk with God. Personally. I've been in a place, or oh, I'm in a place of desiring, of desiring a better place, of desiring to do better in my walk with God. With a deep feeling. I have a deep feeling in me that I know better to do better. But it has all been in vain. Is someone relating with me? I've been in that place of desiring better. Of desiring a better place in my walk with God. 
I have I have this deep feeling that I know better to to do better to walk better with God. I've prayed. I've trusted God. But has been in vain. I've been frustrated. But I love God Almighty. He teaches me through experiences. Now that has been an experience that he has dealt with me. I love God because every time you have a desire, you have a craving for, for what is righteous, he does not forsake you. He does not do what? He does not forsake you. I've been having this desire, but I've seen God minister to me through scripture. That some most times I would come out of my devotion time and I would go to my husband and be like, oh, smiles and he, he, he just tells me what is happening. And I'm like, God has spoken to me. God has given me the answer. God has related something in the scripture and I feel I've been fed. Hallelujah. So this, as this today what I'm sharing is one of those personal moments with God. Where he was giving me a solution to my desperate, A solution to my desire. I've told you I've been with this deep feeling in me that I know better to do better. Hallelujah. But stuck up in a particular place that I'm frustrated about. That I want to see myself in, in a deeper place with my God. In my walk with my God. Hallelujah. So... This is what the Lord ministered to me. I, I've, I've been telling you that I love God. He ministers to, to me through experiences. He teaches me. He reveals to me through experiences. Wow. This is what the Lord said to me. As I was desperate to be in a better place with him, he said to me something. Why I've not even shifted an inch? He said, where you desire Brenda requires your input. Where you desire requires your input. What you desire requires your contribution. When you hear that, you may be like, weren't you praying? Weren't you fellowshipping? You must have been praying. I'm here to tell you I've been praying. Hallelujah. Praying and desiring God but still back to the same place. Is anyone relating? The Lord spoke to me that where you desire requires your input. Where you desire to be Brenda requires your contribution. I said, today we're talking about your contribution to deliverance. I've been desiring God to deliver me and carry me to a particular place. To bring me from a particular place and take me to another place in him. That is desiring deliverance. But this is what the Lord ministered to me. That my deliverance requires my input, my deliverance requires my contribution. You know, Apostle, these are things we don't want to talk about as believers. Someone hearing me talking, sharing something like this is like, oh, you're taking us back to the law. We need, do you mean we need to do something? We are redeemed. We are free in God. You know, I want to share with you a real experience. In this ministry, we are a ministry of the relationship with the person of the Holy Ghost. And when he wants you to be in a particular place, he will speak to you of what is required of you. Hallelujah. So he said to me, my deliverance requires my input. Before I even go any further into the scriptures he gave me, let us go back to the beginning. This is for you that is saying, uh, She's taking, back, she's taking us back to the law. By, to, to, to do things by our energy. Why is she talking about our input, our contribution? This is what the Holy Spirit gave me to you that may think that way. 
We all know from the beginning. Hallelujah. The scriptures reveal we are co-workers with God. We are co-creators with God. Hallelujah. What does that mean? That God works one with man's input. From the beginning we see man's agreement with God during creation. We are going to read the scriptures. Hallelujah. We, we, we see man's agreement with God even during creation. We see man being a co-creator with God from the beginning. Hallelujah. And what does that confirm? This confirms to us that from the beginning, man had a same mind with God. Man had God's mind. Hence, co-creators with God. This I realize will be of late uh, in our intercession services, we get sessions where we study the Bible and we've been digging the book of Genesis. The apostle takes us through, he gets a chapter and he just explains to us what things mean or what it, to get the revelation of the later. So yesterday was, yeah, was our intercession. So that's where we, are, where we were in our intercession, I realized something as he was sharing about Adam and God. Open with me, Genesis. Before even we go any further, I don't want you to be confused that I'm taking you back to the law and we are in an era of grace, you know. Uh, I don't want us to confuse things. So this is what the Lord is saying. Open Genesis chapter 2 from verses 18. Genesis chapter 2 from verses 18. There's something God revealed to me about him and Adam, him and man. What does the Bible say? Jo Genesis chapter 2 verses 17. 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I'll make him a helper comparable to him. Mm. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field. I want you to observe verses 19. Uh -huh. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field mm. and every bird of the air mm -mm. and brought them to Adam mm. to see what he would call them. And Wait whatever. a minute. This was still dueling creation. The Bible said, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air. And he did what? Brought them to Adam. To and see. brought them to Adam. And to see what he would call them. To see what he would call them. God was checking out his mind in the man he had created. We see God co-creating with man. We see God working hand in hand with man. We see the contribution of man during creation. Ask yourself, wouldn't God name them? But he brought them to the man. He brought them to Adam. The Bible said, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. He never went wrong. He never went wrong. The Bible say that when he created, that was, when he named, that was it. I don't see the scripture says that Adam said this should be called a dog. And God said, no, you've missed fire. It's not a dog. It is a cow. But the Bible is saying to us, and called each living creature that, and whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Somebody mark it. That was its name. Why do we see the contribution of man during creation? I love that as, as, as we were studying the Bible. You know, I, I love, I'm, I'm, I'm learning to also be observant and take details. 
To me, this revealed a deep relationship. God is God. How, how could he involve man? But this was to lead, to lead us somewhere that as, as creatures, as people, we are co-workers with God. There is a contribution in everything in our work with God. There is a take of man. Hallelujah. And the Bible continues and says, So Adam gave names to all cattle, all birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper compared to him. He would have called the cow the woman. He would have found uh, the, the goat uh, the comparable partner to him. But he named them as creatures, as birds of the air, but never named any as woman. He had the same mind with God. Because God knew the comparable helper of man was more than the creatures. And you can imagine Adam had that mind to discern. Hallelujah. We're talking about your contribution to your deliverance. The Bible continues and said, when Genesis chapter 2, verses 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall to Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. Somebody say, the Bible is saying Adam was in sleep. God took the rib out of Adam. And God, the Bible tells me, and God formed a woman out of that rib. Adam in sleep. But here what happens. The Bible says God created a woman out of this rib. But the Bible says, then the rib which the Lord had the Lord had taken from man, he made into a woman. It's, the, it's where we first hear a woman, right? Adam is asleep and we hear the Lord forming a woman. And he brought her to the man. Hear what Adam said. And Adam said, this is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called a woman. But Adam was in sleep, was asleep, was put to sleep when God was forming. But once he woke up and God brought the, what he had created from him, the Adam had this mind that this is a woman. And God had already called what he had formed a woman. And we hear Adam also name it from sleep a woman. Hallelujah. So we see man and God being co-workers from the beginning. Hallelujah. From the beginning. The, the, those details interested me as we were reading Genesis. I realized, wow. God involved man. He created everything and he gave him an opportunity to name them. And whatever he named, that was the name of it. He even created a woman and brought the woman to Adam. And, and Adam had the same mind as God and he discerned this is a woman. God would have brought a woman and Adam called her a donkey or called, yeah, a donkey or something. Hallelujah. But Adam, we see Adam rhyming with the spirit of God. We see Adam having the same mind with God. I'm taking you somewhere. Hallelujah. The Lord is revealing to us something. So, I took you there to reveal to you that we are co-workers with God. We see God involving Adam in the details of creation. Hallelujah. So by that, there's something interesting. 
as, as, as I was desperate, as I was yearning, as I was having this desire in me, the Lord ministered to me. And he said, what you desire requires your input. What did that mean? I now understand that what he meant that we should be co-workers. We should work together. There has to be a contribution, Brenda. We have to work together. Hallelujah. We have to work together. So he was inviting me to be a co-worker. Or oh, he's inviting me to be a co-worker with him. To contribute to where I want to go. Hallelujah. What I'm sharing is drawn from an intimate fellowship. I carried my desperate in the presence of God. Having this prayer and these questions. But he said unto me. It, it is like brain is not going to come easy when you are lazy. It's not going to come easy when you continue indulging in that thing that has veiled you from where you are. Wanna be. Hallelujah. We want things to come easy when we are lazy. Doing nothing. But the Lord is ministering to us. Your contribution to your deliverance. I don't know who is stuck up in a certain place. I don't know who is stuck up in a certain uh, in, in, in a certain uh, realm and you feel I should be better. I should be doing better. But you see yourself struggling. With increase in the things of God. Lord, he say, where you require to be requires your contribution. Your deliverance. You is under this voice requires your input. Hallelujah. So the Lord ministered to me that why I'm stuck up where I am is simply because Deliverance requires our input. Like it or not, there is a contribution in our healing. There is a contribution in our healing. Hallelujah. So, he led me in a beautiful scripture I'm going to share with you. And by the end of this, you'll understand what the Lord is ministering and sharing with us. Hallelujah. We will all understand. Hallelujah. So, this is the scripture the Lord shared with me. He led me to a wonderful scripture. Open with me, Mark. Open with me, Mark chapter, uh, Mark chapter 5 is our theme scripture and we'll have different relative scriptures. Mark chapter 5 from verses 20, uh, sorry, Mark 5. Uh, from verses 25. So as I was sh saying to you. As was ministering to me. All this was drawn from this portion of scripture we are going to read. He led me to the woman of the issue of blood. Hallelujah. So let's uh, read the scripture. From verses 25 to verses 34. Let's do a quick read through. Matthew, Mark, sorry, Mark 5, 25 to 34. Mm. The Bible says, mm -hmm. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, and, he had, su and, he, and, sh and had suffered many things from many physicians. Mm -hmm. She had spent all that she had and mm -hmm. was no better, mm -hmm. but rather grew worse. Mm -hmm. When she heard about Jesus, mm -hmm. she came behind him in the crowd and mm -hmm. touched his garment. Amen. For she said, 
if only I may touch his clothes, mm -hmm. I shall be made well. Mm -hmm. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, mm -hmm. and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Amen. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, mm. came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Mm. And he said to her, mm. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Repeat 34, Daughter. And he said to her, uh -huh. Daughter, mm. your faith has made you well. Mm -hmm. Go in peace mm -hmm. and be healed of your affliction. Hallelujah. Now let's get started. This is what the Lord revealed to me and he ministered to my innermost. As I read, it was not the first time to read about the woman of the issue of blood. But to knew my situation, my condition, the answer was right in scripture. So as I came, sat in church, he opened my Bible. He led me to read this portion of scripture. And as I read the scripture, he gave me the revelation. I realized Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you well. I want you to read that with I don't know. Read it detailedly. Mark the word yo. He did not say my faith has made you well. But he said your faith daughter has made you well. Your what? Your faith. That's what the scripture is saying church. I realized that the reverence of this woman came with her contribution. And Jesus is defining to us her contribution was her faith we're going to understand. Child of God, the Lord is saying unto us who are desperate to see God, who are desperate to hear from God, who are desperate to, hear, to, to understand God and increase in the things of God. God is saying, your deliverance requires of your input. Your deliverance requires of your contribution. There has to be your take because you are co-workers with God. It may be your marriage situation. God wants to work with you to, 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 to work out that situation in your marriage. But you know all we do? We go on our knees. Lord, look at this man. Watch this woman. See so what she's doing. And off your knees, you like, God will do it. God will fix it. God fix it, fixes it through you. He created that marriage and he gave you that marriage. He trusted you with that marriage. So he's going to use you to redeem your own marriage. He's going to use you to redeem that which he trusted you with. He works one with man. Hallelujah. So we are believers that pray so much. We always before God. We always at our knees. Rama shata riko sata ribo shende la baba baba. Rika yata riko mbra sata rike shete la baba. Lord, move in my business. Lord, move in my marriage situation. Lord, move in my child's situation. Lord, but God trusted you with that to co-work one with you. There is something. There is your contribution. It's so that God uses you to deliver you. Hallelujah. He uses you. He wanted to create Adam, a woman, a, 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 a companion compar comparable to him. The Bible says he created all creatures and all the birds and Adam named them but the Bible says Adam did not find a suitable helper from the creatures and the birds of the air. But God put him to sleep and he created a woman. But once he created the woman, he brought the woman to Adam and Adam saw that this is and Adam still named her woman. Because Adam said she will be called 
a woman. He wanted a helper, but they had to co work with God to have the helper. Hallelujah. We are frustrated believers. From prophet to prophet, altar to altar, praying in all kinds of prayers, all kinds of gatherings and conferences, but frustrated. Nothing is changing. The Lord spoke to me and he said, yes, brother, there is a place you want to be, but it's going to take you to be one with me. There should be a contribution because your deliverance requires your intake. Your deliverance requires your input. Your deliverance requires your contribution. He works one with you. Hallelujah. How many of us now pray so much? Hallelujah. But. Hallelujah. We do not allow God to work one with us. I'm here to minister to you. God is waiting unto you to yield unto him that, that you create that which you want to see in thy life. God is waiting for you to yield to him so that you create that which you want to see happen in your life. Your healing requires your contribution. Your deliverance requires your contribution. The Bible tells me, the Bible says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. This was a frustrating situation. 12 years with the same condition. The Bible says, She had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew us. This is frustrating. This is disturbing. This is, I don't know, it's draining. But the Bible tells me when she heard about Jesus, when she did what? Because verses that for Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you well. I've done a study, I've done a research of in, in different uh, scriptures in the Bible. It is recorded different times and with different deliverances or healings. Jesus saying, your faith. It's not a new word. It's not a new phrase to you in the Bible. But had you taken time to meditate about why would he say their faith? Because you would think we could debate and argue it was not their faith that they were healed. It was Christ's power. It was Christ's faith. It was by Christ's, you know, will. But Christ said it is their faith that made them whole. Have you taken time and made it about that? It's their faith that has done what? Made them whole. So I realized something, child of God. This woman of the issue of blood, her deliverance came with her contribution. She co-created with Christ, as we read Mark 5, 25 to 34. Because Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. To be made whole is to be saved. Is to be made well. Hallelujah. To be made well is to be saved. So what does that mean? As I meditated, I realized Christ saying that Christ saying that your faith has made you whole, it defined the woman's input. It defined the woman's contribution to her healing. Hallelujah. So your contribution to your Deliverance or healing or redemption or salvation is your faith. Hallelujah. Is your what? Is your faith. So God ministered to me as I was there.
desperate yearning and crying out. There's something I wanted to see, but it was not falling in place. It was not happening. He reminded me. He spoke to me that this deliverance requires my contribution. And that is my faith. Hallelujah. That is your faith. The woman of the issue of blood, her contribution to her deliverance was the attitude of her heart, which is defined, or which we can define, or which defines her faith, Christ talked about. I repeat. The woman of the issue of the blood, her contribution to her deliverance was the attitude of the heart which Christ defined as her faith. Which Christ defined as her faith. Hallelujah. That was her contribution. It is her faith. Jesus said it is her faith that sets her free. It was her faith, or it, oh, I would say her faith was her input to her freedom. Hallelujah. With carnal eyes, you may be like, well, what is, where is her contribution? Why would Christ give her the credit? Why would Christ call for her contribution? Hallelujah. By grace, we have this in us. We have faith in us. Scriptures say that faith is by Hallelujah. Faith is a gift of God. That's what scriptures say. Faith is a what? Faith is a gift of God. But to work out that faith is your responsibility and your contribution to your deliverance. Hallelujah. By grace, you receive the deposit of faith. The apostle teaches us this. We have faith. It is a gift. We can read that scripture. We can read that scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. We can read there. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. The Bible says Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Uh-huh. For by grace you've been saved through faith. By grace you've been saved through faith. And that not of your souls. And not of your souls. It is the gift of God. Faith is a gift of God. Hallelujah. I repeat that the Bible said, By grace you've been saved and not of. By grace, by faith. For by, by faith. For by grace you have been saved through by, faith. Through faith. Uh -huh. And that not of your souls. Not of your souls. It is the gift of God. Uh -huh. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. Yes. The, the Bible is saying faith is a gift of God. To every man. To every mankind that believes in Jesus Christ. It is a gift. But hear what the Lord is saying. It is a free gift, Yes. But to work it out, to exercise that gift, that free gift is your responsibility. And that is your contribution to your deliverance. Faith, it, we, we have faith. He has given us faith. But it is our, it is our responsibility. The Bible says that daughter, your faith has healed you. But when we go back to the previous scripture, that is in verses 28. This is, this is where this woman exercised her faith. The Bible said, for she said, other versions say, that she said in her heart. In her what? In her heart. If only I may touch his garment. If only I may touch his clothes. That was the desire of this woman. The Bible says, I shall be made whole. I shall be made well. Imagine church. So I'm coming to realize this was her input. This was her contribution. This was, this, this defined a relationship, an intimacy of the heart. Because the Bible says, 
she said in her heart, she believed in her heart. She wore this mind, this kingdom attitude that if I only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. I'll be saved. That was a heart in intimacy with Christ. That's why the Bible says when once she touched Christ, Christ turned around and said, powers come out of me. Who touched me? Peter and the others said, sir, the, the, the crowd is so big. How can you say who touched me? This was a heart to heart relationship, fellowship. Peter tebala ba ya kuata ku Yesu. Ne Yesu reso ngancho mutima gwo muchalono kwali hooked up with Christ. He felt something happening. She had an experience with Christ. That was a contribution. Hallelujah. So church faith is a free gift. By grace you are saved through faith. But to exercise faith is your take in your, in your experience with Christ. That is your contribution. So I want to go deeper in this particular area. This woman had a condition. This woman had a situation. Hallelujah. Many of us, we having situations, we'll be like, God, deliver me out of this. God, let this come to an end. God, make a way for me where seems to be no way. God, redeem me from this habit. But I'm here to speak to you. You'll never be delivered if you still endow in the same thing. Yet you pray. Yes, you pray, you call on God and go back into the same thing. God is calling unto your contribution because your contribution is that trust in God. To th that trust in God not to turn back to that thing and truly repent and choose to change. That is your contribution to your deliverance. That commitment, that faith, that trust in your spirit to trust God Hallelujah. We pray about stuff and we are tested because the apostle race tells us whatever you pray for, it will come around. You'll be tested. Right? You pray, the test comes. So, your contribution to your take is when that test comes, is when that temptation comes, do you turn your back to the temptation or you still go into the same thing? For instance, if you want to be in a deeper intimate relationship and you've grown to realize that the phone is a distraction, social media is a distraction, it is distracting you. So you pray to God to help you redeem you from overcoming social media, but the test of the phone is going to come and you're going to grab the phone instead of hitting the 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 Bible icon, you still go to YouTube, you still go to Instagram, you still go to these things that, you know, that your soul is inclining unto. Yes, it is a struggle, but God is saying your contribution is this total trust in God. This persuasion towards the will of God that I will not do it. I will not give in to it. When the temptation comes, you turn your back to the temptation and say yes to the will of God. That's what God is requiring of you. Sisi asubula na kusaba. Sisi asubula bulu unji. Sisi asubula nga wa insaba. Mpuri ya sikuru kutabulu unji. Mpuri ya walue chikute. Nene 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 nene. Chikute. Kuwanga. Ememe 
Eyo, einebi jiria, einebi jituala, neemu kamomu saba, ayagalo take your contribution by saying orunakuluche, you say no to social media, you say no to YouTube, you say no to any social media icon, I'll read the Bible, I'll go deeper into the presence, I'll go deeper, into, so I'll go deeper in God, I'll step into deeper realms, instead of grabbing the phone, I'll get rid of the phone and go to the altar. I pray that is your contribution. As you try out that by his grace he enables you more. And the inclination of your soul will change. I've been in a season where the message of this ministry has become a reality. It's easy to talk about things but it's, it's another thing to experience the, the exact tests on you where the word has to be a reality hallelujah so we are people that are so much like God yes Lord I've prayed and trusted God will deal with it we are struggling in the, and we are in that place of so called waiting on God but indulging in the same habits and same sin but I'm waiting on God he'll come out for me he'll come out for me he'll do it I'm waiting child of God there is your contribution this woman the Bible says she heard about Jesus and the Bible says she made a commitment in her heart there was this persuasion of, of trusting God towards the will of God, towards the truth, towards what she knew Jesus could do. There was this faith in her heart. That was a contribution. Hallelujah. I'm growing to learn the things we are struggling with. We are not going to run away from them. No. It should be around you. It should be with you. But God delivers you from it. Hallelujah. I remember those days when I used to struggle with a phone. Sorry, with, with pictures. And even by that time, I never used to have a good phone. I never used to have, you know, but I used to struggle with pictures. I used to love pictures because uh, my drive was about posting and, you know, you know, posting and posting. My life was about posting and proving something. Hallelujah. But I remember the other time, we were somewhere seated in a restaurant with my husband. And I saw this group of young girls. They were not so young because they were mothers. They all had babies. They had babies. They, were, they, had, they had this makeup or dress. I think they were from a certain party, but they had come to this place just to take pictures and do a small restaurant where everyone is looking at you, but they could stand, do that, do this, turn around, eh, eh, you know. They even got to a moment where they could call on the young kids, like you can call KK, KK, take me picture. <laughs> and <it'd be laughs> so I looked at them. I told my husband, glory be to God. That's where I was. That's how I was. And you give a little child to take pictures and you, immediately she's done. No bitam. Kakubi abifana nye bibi e diso lili te nyinde yeti. Rukaga no riango di frasu de numga dam. Kuga no siba kuogo because you want to have good, you know. So I looked at these people. Why am I sharing this? To me, it was a testimony that you can be delivered from something. And it no more consumes you. You no more under the influence of it. You free and free and free. Yet you have the same resources they have that they use. You have the phone, you have everything, you have the social media, you know, platforms. You have even where to post those things. I'm not saying I don't take pictures. I have pictures. I have pictures. I have them, but I don't, I don't anymore have this inclination. I take them, but for my own, you know. So, as 
as I looked at these ladies, I saw these women and I saw myself in them. I was like, I was right there. I was right there. I was in that place. So what am I talking about? I was saying what, what you want to be delivered from, you don't run away from me. Total deliverance is when you get to a point when, as the scriptures say, in 1 Corinthians chapter, I think, 3.16, no, 3.12, that uh, all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not, uh, no, the scripture says all things are lawful, but I will not be under the power of any heart. When I learned that, so whatever I'm struggling with, I'm still under the power of it. Everything I've overcome, I'm now not under the power of it. So things are okay to do. That is not demonic. Taking a good picture and posting your good picture is not, that, is not, is not satanic. But what I'm saying that becoming the inclination of your soul because we had gotten to a point with my friends where we could even have no places to, we're not going anywhere, but we pack up a suitcase of clothes and shoes and grab our phones and take a, go into a spot just to take pictures. You can imagine. No parking anger again at holiday. Nemuwalula ka case. Nkulage chigenge chali chatulia. Nenga mugenze mchifo. Kugena mu toilet size chifo we mchusa we mwe kwe bifana nyi we mukoma we mchusa we mukoma we mchusa. Ngaluachi. Ngatua gala to stalking up pictures for her. A long time for a good period. So ngo jayo kam. No posting. No itawe na kusatu. No jayo kam. No posting. Kwe ganga wateresem akaivwe biyo mwezi. Echochiwa chigenge. Banange. Obobubaburu wado kwa kutamira. Echochiwa chikulide. Ngawebu la mubo. Nemumano bie kwa hene kufuko mlimo nobera musimu ye miezi ne miezo liomo. Katunuri de nyindo ya vudeli. Sori ya vudeli. No kasika no kasuminga in and out. Kwa gama. Nenga toso mie baibuli. Uleba stand. When the, the is one you, you get into, when you try to read your Bible, you sleep. The Bible becomes heavy. The things of God become heavy. But when it comes to these other things, you so alert, you so awake, you so active. But to the things of God, it's, uh, uh, you know. So, the Lord is speaking to us, church. First of all, you're struggling with what you're struggling with because you still entertain it. You still love it. Your soul still inclines to it. Your soul still inclines to it. You're failing to overcome because it's, you still entertain it. So God is ministering to us, church. That let's make, let's allow God Perfect faith in us. This persuasion towards the truth. In us, towards the truth, towards the will of God. That no matter what, Lord, I choose. I choose you. I choose your experience. I choose your encounter. I choose your ways. I choose your things. Hallelujah. So when I looked to meet. When I looked at this woman, I realized many of us, it may not be the exact situation, but there is a situation you need deliverance about. But God is saying he co-works with you. There should be a contribution because your deliverance calls for your intake, for your contribution. You need to be one with God. Hallelujah. Many of us, we've failed out in our marriages, we fell out in things that, you know, what we're destined to be. 
it may be a business, it may be a, an idea, it may be something God inspired you to start, God led you into, but you've fallen out to, on it simply because you're this kind of a believer that uh, I, I'm in this place of waiting on God but doing nothing. You're in this place of waiting on God but not living in obedience with God. You're in this place of waiting on God but not doing, living by the promptings of the spirit. You're not yielding to the truth but you're in a place of waiting on God. Praying so much, giving so much, sowing so much, altar to altar, but God is looking for your contribution. Hallelujah. Because many of us, when I talk about your contribution, we're thinking about our works. We're thinking about things we can do for God. But sometimes God can say, think he can speak to you about things. And he wants you to yield. He wants you to yield to his promptings. I'm growing to learn and realize that without a prayer life, you cannot be sensitive to the to the promptings of the spirit. You need to be a person that, that despite your, your, your works, the giving, the helping, the, you know, all things that God uses you to do in his kingdom, you, when it comes to your nature and character, you incline to the will and the lead of the spirit. Hallelujah. That you incline to the work of the Holy Spirit. So, that's why I say to you in the beginning, I said that this message is unto everyone that desires better, but cannot do better. That desires better, but stuck up in the same situation over and over again. I don't know what situation you're stuck into. It may be sin, it may be a habit, it may be something that just separates you from God. Think of anything you're struggling with. It may be a situation, unchanging situation that has consumed you, that is taking up your heart, that has become an idol in your heart. Whatever it is, God is saying, should take our eyes off everything and purpose in our hearts as this woman. The Bible says, when she heard, when she did what? She heard about Jesus. Let's, because Jesus said, after this woman was redeemed, that woman, daughter, your faith has healed you. But we may all think it was not about this woman. It was the power of Christ that set her free. But we see Christ giving her credit. And on different occasions in the Bible, it is recorded Jesus saying, your faith has redeemed you. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Have you ever taken time and made it about that? You would say, by God's power you made whole. By my power, by who I am you made whole. He said, by their faith. And if we read, because I'm going to take you deeper, and we read in different uh, books, in different chapters uh, where it was recorded, Jesus saying, your faith has made you whole. There was something about these people. There was something about these people. So the Lord ministered to me in that place of desperate, desiring, having this deep feeling, the Lord I know better, help me to do better. I had, he spoke to me and he said, your deliverance requires your input, Brenda. So I'm here to speak to a woman. I'm here to speak to a man. Your condition may not be my condition. It may be about your marriage. It may be about your, your children. It may be about your job. It may be about your business. But God is saying, let's not just stop uh, uh, praying about things, uh, crying to God about things. Uh, but God is saying, he wants this deep persuasion in your spirit. This trust. Because it is your faith that is going to redeem you. Hallelujah. It is your faith that is going to redeem you. So, to me, verses 28 in Mark 5, 28, about the woman of the issue of the blood. 28 defined her input. That despite her condition, her heart drew near to God. 
Or as they teach us here, how do we love God? When we love his commandments, when we live in obedience, that is the perfect love. Because when we love the truth and live in the truth and walk in the truth, that's what sanctifies our inner man. And the other time they're teach, teaching us about what pleases God. What pleases God? How do we please God when we have an upright heart? So that is when, 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 you, 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 when God perfects this heart in you, that is your faith. That is your faith making you whole because you've heard the truth and you yield to the truth. Your responsibility is to exercise the truth, walk in the truth. That is your contribution to your healing, deliverance. Hallelujah. So I was saying the woman of the issue of blood, her contribution to her deliverance was the attitude of her heart which this defined her faith. Hallelujah. So, despite her condition, her heart drew near to God. But we are frustrated about our situations, yet our hearts are far from God. What Christ meant by your faith has healed you, a heart drew near to God. I repeat, we are frustrated in this journey of salvation. Now walk with God simply because our hearts are far from God. A heart that is far from God is a heart that yields not to the promptings of the Spirit. You know, we, we, I'm talking to a degree or a level of believers that we know what is right and what is wrong. We know what to do and what, as a believer, what we should do. But God is saying unto us, what we do or a relationship or intimacy with him is more than the works. Hallelujah. It's like you grow up a child and you tell her that this is, this is how they do it, you know. You mold this child. No mute kam chona chagal o mute kam o bi muta dem kat tu kuzem dininga tu ina bi tu izenti o mukiriza akola chino ne chino ne chino ne chino ne mukama yaga la kuata kumbala mukama yaga la kuata kumuntu wamunda mukama yaga la yo ina man to kiss his spirit. But we do these formal things, you know, these works, we know the religious works, but our hearts are far from God. He spoke to the Pharisees, you wash me with your lips. He was talking about their religious works, their external expression of, God, of godliness, but when their hearts are far from God. So our contribution is when we draw our inner man, our in a person to God. To allow God work in you. Deal with your inner person. Change you. Mukama didi ngano fumbo wange ni gotu ya gala kule mumulimu. Mukama msajyo yomulaba na ye gwe mbala angabu akubi kulilabu ofana no limu chaf. Ni gwe kastofu kamila kwa ino musabira musabira Umchala musabira, umami musabira, umusabira. Neeka tonda anonya gwe. Because I began by saying we are co-workers with God. He works one with you. He wants to use you to redeem that which he trusted you with. So he wants your heart to kiss his heart. He wants that intimacy with him. Hallelujah. So this woman... Drew, her heart drew near to God. Yet many of us were frustrated, but our hearts are far from God. Don't you know the scripture that says, draw near to me, and I'll draw near to you. She purposed in her heart, and she drew near to God. And that's why God said, someone has touched me. It was not about this physical garment. He, the heart of this woman kissed the heart of God. When God needs one with the heart of God, that's what, that's our contribution. So we need to yield to God. We need to walk with God. Hallelujah. 
We need to be one with God. Let me conclude with the scripture. I'll continue from here. But let me conclude with James 4, 8. What does it say? James chapter 4. James, James 4, chapter cha 4, verses 8 says, yeah. Draw near to God, mm. and he will draw near to you. Repeat that. Draw near to God, draw and near he will to draw God. near to you. Mm -hmm. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Hear what drawing near to God is about. The Bible says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. He's defining how we draw near to him. How? When we cleanse our hands, your hands is about the way of your life. When you cleanse the way of your life, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. God said, your faith that has sealed you. And the Bible tells us that a double-minded person can receive nothing from God. So we are double-minded because we love God but indulge in sin. We love God but walk in disobedience. We are double-minded people. So he said, draw near to me. Draw close to me. When you draw near to me, your hands are cleansed and you, your hearts are purified and you no more a double-minded than you shall receive from God. That's why, that's why they call you faith. Has healed you. Hallelujah. Your faith has healed you. When you begin from the above verse, 7 says, mm. Therefore, mm. submit to God. Submit to God. Resist the devil, mm. and he will flee from you. The Bible said, resist. Uh -huh. The Bible says, the Bible submit says. to God. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil and he will flee. So every time you are disturbed with a habit, submit to God. Every time something comes back, this appetite for that something comes back, submit to God. Submit to the truth. Because the truth says that is sin. That is not of God. That is not right. That is profaning God's altar. You are God's altar. So every time it comes back, submit to God by running to the altar and getting rid of that. Then the devil will flee. The devil is around because we keep entertaining him. The devil is still around because we entertain him. We enjoy him. Hallelujah. But this woman purposed. She purposed in her spirit. She submitted to God. Yes, the devil is tormenting her with this situation, with the blood issue. It had become part of her 12 years as, as so many years. There are situations in our lives that are so perpetual that have been there. That the devil speaks to you about that situation as if it will never change. But the Lord is saying, don't submit to the lies of the devil. Submit to God. Then that, the devil that is tormenting you will flee. Will flee. So what resists a habit? Is submitting to God. Because the Bible said, submit to God and resist the devil. So, what is your contribution? It's submission to the truth. It's submission to God. Your, your, in, your, your, your take is submission to God. Never to say yeah yeah say yeah yeah yes wa ja kola ezenize yes wa ja kola ngabo yongera mu chintu mukama gamba mugondere buono mugondera kugonda kutya joan ngoli agamba soma ku bible sabako wadu tochiulira oli munafu no go na no sabako. No 
Nogona no jisoma. You submitting to the prompting of the spirit. And by that you resisting this spirit of laziness. This spirit of the devil. This evil spirit. That does not want you to grow and incline to the things of God. Go on the muntobo obutono. Submit to God. Hallelujah. But I'm struggling, I'm struggling. The voice of God is within you. I understand very clearly and I can relate that the voice of God can be available in you, but the flesh is weak. Now you feel, you, it's not easy to read the Bible, but you easily inclined to Instagram. You easily inclined to TikTok for hours, but you cannot pray for 10 minutes. I can witness. It is possible, but God is speaking to you tonight. Slowly by slowly, slowly by slowly, when he says pray, get up and pray. Yield and pray. That's how he's going to help you overcome the inclination to the world and then develop in the things of God. We are believers, but so far from the love of God. We are believers, but so far from the things of God. That we are just religious. I'll come to church. I'll go and I'll do that. At an hour, we would do jam church. We do yagalam kama do kole biyam kama we do wereza. God is saying, yield to His promptings. He speaks to you. Buliyoma ina area mla be wa kuwati da. Maybe in your finances. Get those rigamo college tuf. Mla be gamba netda we no kuita o. It may be about your job. It may be about your partner. It may be about something. But God is saying how the, the devil will flee. How we resist him. How he resists anything that is not of God is when we submit to God. So, James 4, 7 to 8 defines to us our contribution to our deliverance. Submission to God. This woman, the Bible says, she had she had, when she had, then, the, then the, that was the deposit of faith. Well, because the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. When she had Christ, Christ is the word. <laughs> Christ is the what? Mimi yetu mare mam. Hallelujah. She submitted to the word. She believed. She said in her heart. That's why Christ was touched by her faith. And so it was, it was not by Christ's faith that she was made whole. It was by, by her faith that she was made whole. Katawina Wolude. Nechukere says is your contribution to your deliverance. We know we are going to create an each case as the ingredients Jesus is your contribution to that place. Your submission to God is your faith. This trust, trusting the truth, living the truth, yielding to the promptings of the spirit is your contribution to where you ought to be. To when I quit away, thou lazy, weak, not like obeying the spirit and you think you'll get there, you need to obey the spirit and we shall be there. What I'm sharing is not by power, it's not by mighty, it's by the spirit of God. I get experiences where I'm weak to pray, but I hear the prompting to pray. Just get out and pray, just pray, just pray. And you hear you're weak. I've let what I say when every time I get into prayer, I always say, I cannot pray as I ought to pray. But I've come that you praise the mind of the Father through me. Pray through me. I'm yielding my vessel. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
the power is submitting to the spirit. So I, before I do anything, I say I'm here. I've yielded. I'm feeling the prompting to pray, but I don't feel praying. But I have come to thee, as the scripture says, that he prays through us the mind of the Father. So he's prompting me to pray because there is something wants me to pray about. The mind of the Father. So I call upon him to pray through me. Ogeno kula wa gwaza dragging. Nga katonda chikolo kuita mungwe. Nga yega iliranga sawa. Katiba loko le tulekira uvu na fu. Mbuogela kukwa nga been there. Chino kanchi kugambe. Every believer under this voice, I'm growing to learn by the Spirit of God without a prayer life, we shall not develop in the things of God. Without a prayer life, you always be, you always be under the torment of the enemy. Without a prayer life, there will be perpetual affliction. Without a prayer life, there will always be delay in things that concern you. Hallelujah. When I talk about a prayer life, it's not soon about in the morning when I'm going to bed. This is a perpetual fellowship with the Spirit of God. He will always prompt you to pray, pray. So the Bible is saying to us, if we, the, when you read James 4, 8, or 4, 7, from 7 to 8, if indeed our hearts are in oneness with the Spirit of Christ, the devil, the devil would free. The unceasing situations would end. But we stuck up in habit simply because we still entertain and enjoy them. Your soul still inclines to them. But as I conclude, note something, child of God. You can never overcome what you entertain. You can never overcome what you entertain. What you still, what still entertains your soul, what still consumes your soul, you never over overcome. But the God is saying, Almighty, we submit to his authority. We're going to overcome the enemy. We're going to overcome the love of the world. Because the Bible says, if the love of the world is in us, uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses, from verses 15 to 17, if the love of the world is still in us, the world is still in us, then the love of God is not in us. So we bless the name of the living God. Get up on your faith. I don't know where you ought to be. I don't know what you're praying for. I don't know where you desire to be. But God is speaking to you and, and me. That where you desire to be calls for your contribution. Where you ought to be requires your contribution. Hallelujah. God is faithful. God is able. Child of God, you stack up where you are. Simply because you are far from God by spirit. You are far from God. Your contribution is submitting to the spirit of God, to the truth revealed to you, to the truth that is in you, to the spirit of truth that is in you. That is your contribution that your deliverance requires. So we're going to submit and surrender to God. We're going to submit and surrender to the living God. I know we are weary, we are tired, we are frustrated. We have unchanging situations. There are countless in our lives. A, B, C, D has never changed. But I pray. I love God. I'm a believer. God is requiring intimacy. Intimacy is about dealing with you. Intimacy is about dealing with your heart. Intimacy is about perfecting your heart. Intimacy is about drawing you to God. Intimacy is about being purified and cleansed on the inside. And then we shall see deliverance. So your contribution is your faith. That is an intimate relationship with God. As Christ said, your 
faith has saved you, has made you whole, so is your faith. It's by your faith that you're going to be made whole. Cry out to the living God. Pray to Jesus. Tell him, Father, I surrender. Teach me to submit to your ways. Teach me to submit to your truth. Teach me to submit to you alone, Father. I desire you know my ways. I need you more than anything, Jesus. Teach me to continue in your truth, Father. The, 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 the promptings I feel in my spirit, but I'm, I, I, I harden my heart. Lord, forgive me. Let me learn to soften my heart towards thy truth. Let me learn to do the truth, Lord. Let me learn to yield to you, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody commit to God. You know your battles. You know your struggles. You know what you're struggling with. God is saying if we still entertain our habits and our struggles, if we do not abide at the altar, if we're not people of the altar, if we not yield to God and, and resist that which consumes us, we have not we've not contributed to what we want to see. There is your contribution in what God is yet to do for you. There is a contribution that is required in that which God requires, that which wants it from God. He co-works with you. As from the beginning co-worked with man. Yes, man fell, but we saw redemption by Jesus Christ and we received the spirit of God. God wants you to co-work with the spirit of God in you. The spirit of truth that is within you. Let's submit to the truth. Let's submit to the truth. I don't know where you are and where you desire to be. You're having so many distractions in your life. But God is saying, your faith is going to set you free. By saying that, it reveals your contribution to your deliverance. That only if you trust the truth, you trust the spirit of God, you yield to the spirit of God, you obey the spirit of God, you are going to see things manifest in your life. You are going to see things unfold in your journey. You are going to see ministry unfold. You are going to see everything unfold. God is able. God is faithful. Somebody pray to the living God that there is where I want to be. But Lord, I'm stuck where I am. But tonight I submit and surrender. I surrender, Lord. Have your way in me. Child of God, your contribution is you yielding your inner person for the sanctification of the spirit. That's what will bring about deliverance. But our hearts are far from God. Our hearts are, we are double-minded people. Our hearts are unclean. Sin is in us, but we want to see deliverance of God. But Jesus says, it's by your faith. Your intimacy, your relationship, your submission to the truth that you're going to see the might move of God in your marriage. The might move of God in your life. God wants to work one with you by perfecting you in his, in his mind. By perfecting you, it perfecting your inner man, sanctifying and cleansing your inner spirit. Then you will see everything unfold. What is stopping your deliverance is the uncleanness of our inner person. Is the uncleanness, is the inclination to the world that profanes us. But God is saying, let's submit to the spirit of truth. Let's submit to the spirit of God. Let's resist the spirit of the world. Inclination to the ways of the world. Let's not just be religious, coming to church, connecting to the messages, but not putting at work the message. God is saying we've got to walk the journey. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. This is for me. This is for you. Somebody submit and surrender. That enable me my, my enabling power. Enable me my Jesus. Enable my spirit. I submit, oh God. Help me have consistency in all my ways. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray to the living God is able and faithful. God loves you. And just say, Amen. And amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. May we all see deliverance from this day. May we all see the hand of God from this day. May we all walk in the power of the Holy Ghost from this day. In the mighty name of Jesus. May God bless you. See you on Sunday. We shall continue with more scriptures, more details as the Holy Spirit uh, will use me. Hallelujah.